You can support this show at patreon.com slash ASA podcasting. Hello, welcome back, uh, Skyrimatic Podcast. I'm Michael, joined by uh, Victor. Good evening, and Ray. Howdy, howdy. And uh, we're back with some Skyrim, uh, some reading lessons, <laughs> some uh, <laughs> some HVAC lessons we've learned. Mm. <laughs> yes. Shut off your heater when the air conditioner's on on the uh, crazy warm October days, and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, learn how to read what the mods are so Ray can find them in the Nexus. So, so, so. Yeah, silly me and my literal typing. <laughs> yeah. Should have interpreted what I was saying and not just uh, – uh, yeah. So I uh, uh, I started a new character, but uh, since we were talking about it last time, you said you went into Into the Abyss, right? Yeah. Yeah. How did, how did you uh, enjoy that one? Uh, I loved it. It was a fun, fun uh, mod. It was, it was tough. So yeah, uh, the character that I went in with is my Shadeling character. Um, and she's crazy powerful. But when I, when I started the, the mod, I was, uh, I had, my health was like 120. Mm-hmm. You know, my Magicka was, you know, close to 600. Whoa. Um, Whoa. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was, it was definitely, <clears throat> you know, the epitome of glass cannon. I mean, I couldn't yeah. take a single hit, especially off of those, uh, the saints and seducers characters. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. tough. Yeah. Cause there's a uh, bunch of them in there. Yeah. Yeah. And definitely, you know, I, I one good thing is, so, um, I'm using Elemental Blast um, as my destruction oh, yeah. spell. Um, I've got a, a couple of you know crazy powerful daggers too. If I if I'm going to do a dagger kill, but with the Elemental Blast, I also have uh, the Conflagration. Mm-hmm. So you know the the first person you, that you hit, um, they burst into flames and they sit there and burn and anybody that passes through them, you know, takes burn damage too. Uh, well, you, you know, by the third or the fourth, you can just stop casting because everybody that comes through is going to die <laughs> because you've got all of this fire. And, uh, uh, and so, you know, that works out pretty good, but yeah, not for them. It, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's a couple of spots in there where, um, it was it was hairy. Uh, it took me quite a while to figure out how to, you know, how to survive, especially in the final one, um, because then you're you're trapped in an area, and there's there's nowhere to hide. Uh, there's no, you know. Usually, I'll go for vertical surfaces. Um, I've got blink teleport. Oh, okay. and so. You know, if there's a pillar or a ledge or, you know, something that I can get to, um, I'll, I'll teleport up and, and, you know, kind of catch my breath. But, uh, in the, in the final quest, there's no hiding. So is blink, blink teleport is apocalypse? Uh, no, it's a standalone. Oh, okay. Um, are you, are you running a mod pack then or, or, or did you build it yourself? Uh, it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a hybrid. I, mm. I use a couple of different, uh, collections, uh, one for visuals, one for, um, you know, kind of, uh, different additions to the game. And then all of the, you know, the individual ones I need for any particular character. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, cool. So, you know, if I want to use, you know, the different uh, um, Manai Scion, um, you know, either, you know, spells or standing stones or, you know, whatever, um, 
you know, I'll, I'll add those in separately. Mm -hmm. uh, but this blink teleport, uh, so it's one that I'd used, you know, for quite a while. Um, but they've, they updated it, um, a while back, uh, to where now it, uh, takes up a voice slot. Ah. And so, um, you can put it on, uh, on the Z key. Mm. Uh, so instead of a shout, um, you teleport. Do you have to use Fuzro Do for that or, or, is, or does it not matter? Um, I suppose that only matters if you want characters voice or lips to move with unvoiced dialogue. I guess that's all that Fuzro Do is for. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. My, my mod uh, list for this character is kind of weird, you know, kind of crazy. It, hmm. Um, I have to put in a lot of notes into uh, the mod descriptions. There's, you know, Vortex lets you put in uh, different, uh, you know, notes uh, because so many different mods, you know, this one needs this. Yeah. That I do that. With, that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's cool. Yeah. I, because mod organizer does that too, but it's not easy to find them. You have to, yeah, you know, there's a couple of clicks to find the notes. So I usually like rename my mods, you know, whatever missive needs in big capital letter needs something <laughs> or whatever, you know, so yeah. I can see it right in the mod list. Yeah. Yeah. That does yeah. make it easy. Yeah. Um, but it was, so the big advantage with the, uh, the blink teleport with into the abyss was that I didn't have to try to, uh, you know, control where I was falling to. I could just <laughs> oh, blink the, from yeah. ledge to ledge. Oh, that's cool. That's and, way easier. <laughs> yeah. You know, just go through the door when I got there. Um, that's good. <laughs> one thing I didn't realize until I was really struggling, you know, there was, there <laughs> were like two keys I needed to find mm -hmm. um, that I hadn't found, but I could, you know, I thought I'd been to all the doors. Um, and then I realized that uh, uh, the doors are actually listed on the local map. Oh, oh. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. So oh. I so I pulled up the 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 map and wrote down all the different doors. And then I went through Makes my list sense. of keys and checked off which ones I each had been one. to oh, and cool. which ones I hadn't. Nice. And then, okay, so now I see I need to get to this one and I need to get to that one. Uh, and so then I was able to just kind of blink around inside the uh, inside the abyss. To get to each one. To get to it. Nice. That's good. Gotcha. Very cool. That um, makes it way easier for sure to get from, instead of having to start at the top and fall to each place. Yeah, to fall to each to go, different level. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was it, it it worked out really well. Um I did I did have one where um I I went into the room and you could tell something was supposed to happen in this place. You know, there's a big dragon mound in the middle of it. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> I kept getting, you know, the little uh indicator that uh I was being looked at. Um, but nothing was happening. I, I mean, I was even casting spells, hmm. but of course I have a mod that lets you cast destruction spells um, as sneak weapons. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> it wasn't tipping anybody off to my location. Um, so I'm like, okay, well, I have no idea what to do inside this room. I've, I've gone everywhere I can. I've, you know, teleported around all the different openings up above. And I just could not find anything that would, you know, that, you know, would show me what I needed to do in this room. Um, and so I stood up to leave. And as I was walking out, all of a sudden this dragon appears in the middle. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but I had been so stealthy that it hadn't triggered the, uh, you know, the, uh, the event. And, yeah. I did uh, the same thing actually. <laughs> it was, I mean, you just sit there. I, I, I give up. I don't know. Um, you know, the, that was one of the things I loved about the mod is there is zero handholding. 
Oh, yeah, that no, you don't yeah. get any markers, you don't get anything. It's like do this, you know, random thing, you know, find the keys. Okay, great. Not every, not every, <laughs> not every room from, you know, with every door has a key, which, you know, is like, okay, did I miss it? No, because <laughs> I got all the doors open. So I didn't miss any. There's just some that don't have keys. Um, <laughs> one of them you realize doesn't have a key because it's a, a room that's set up for you to relax in. <laughs> um it's it's a little ways down so it's like okay you've probably had enough right now how about just some mellow time <laughs> nice um but it was it, it was definitely a lot of fun there's some tough ones um yeah you know, some fun ones and uh it's <laughs> it has a um a Shea Gorath bend to it Oh yeah, yeah. And so, you know, there's a lot of madness. Hmm. <laughs> As to be expected. <laughs> so, um there's one super cool level that you go into and it's a bunch of of um ships. Yeah. Uh that are all built out of uh Dwemer pipes. And they're, you know, Ooh. they've got Dwemers, you know, um, automatrons on them. Um, I went into the room and immediately my frame rate dropped to a, like 10. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it crashed. Oh, wow. Oh, no. I'm like, huh. So, I, you know, tried it a couple of more times. Still the same thing. I, okay. It's got to be a mod conflict. So I looked through my mod list. I go, well... I've got one that, you know, reworks Dwemer pipes. Oh. So oh. good chance That's that could it. be yeah. doing it. Yeah. You know, if I'm trying to beautify, you know, hundreds and hundreds of yeah. Dwemer pipes. Yeah, if it, especially if it, if it changed the meshes. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, I took that one out of my mod list and boom, yeah. got in. No problem. Worked just great. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Um, you know, that one was a lot of fun. I, I started out doing that one, uh, with blink. Um, but I was having no interactions with anything. Um, so I thought, okay, this probably isn't going to work, you know, cause I, you know, none of the, none of the automatrons knew I was there, <laughs> you know, you know, nobody was looking on, you know, the top of the pipes for anybody. <laughs> um, and so I went back to the beginning and uh, realized that you can lower these these uh, bridges, bridges, yeah, and go from ship to ship. Nice. And so uh, you know that cool. that let me get through the uh, you know through that level. <laughs> but cool. yeah, it, definitely a lot of fun. It's a it's a tough mod. Uh, you need to be pretty strong. Um, and if you've got a gla glass cannon, you better be ready to, uh, you know, to improvise uh, because there's, you know, there's definitely a lot of hard, hard hitting uh, um, enemies. And the mod author loves to stand them right on the other side of the door. Yes. So as yeah, soon yeah, as you open yeah. the door, bam, somebody's in your face. Yeah. That's really annoying. <laughs> so... It was uh, it was challenging at times, which was you know I mean that's you know kind of the point of it. Yeah, because as long as it's not on the other side of a door, that's also a load screen, because then that can be really really annoying. Yeah, you know there there were a lot of uh, a lot of really weird things too. So uh, one of them is you're in this uh, in this giant forest. And all of the buildings are are suspended in, in the tree, you know, mm -hmm. canopy. Um, and if you fall down, uh, you can survive. But when I teleported back to, 
you know, to the buildings, everything was upside down. <laughs> so I, instead of, <laughs> instead of walking on the rooftops, I was walking on the, on the underside of the buildings <laughs> oh, um, God. instead of walking on top of the, uh, the, you know, the wooden uh, bridges. Um, I was on the bottom and uh, it just, when I got to where I, you know, to the end, I couldn't get um, out from underneath. So, That's so definitely weird. if you, if you fall down, just start over. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember yeah. that happening to me. Yeah, that might have just been a you know because I blinked, um, oh, yeah. you know, to get back up. Yeah, and uh, you know everything was just upside down from that point on. Mm. <laughs> yeah, if you don't have blink, which sounds like it works a little better, uh, you definitely need like become a thorough or end whirlwind sprint. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Um, so, world uh, blink is kind of a longer range whirlwind sprint. Yeah. Um. So, you can you can travel long distances with that, um, to the point where the screen will go black uh, because it has to load a new cell. Wow. Um, you've gone so far. Have you ever had oh, any wow. crashes because of that? No, haven't. Oh. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had where you just, you know, if you try to go too far, it just won't go. Yeah. Um, you'll just, it'll, you know, poof and you're right back where you were. Yeah. Okay. Um, that makes sense. but yeah, no, I didn't, you know, I have, I, I have had, um, situations where I've, uh, missed my mark and, then gone sailing off into, you know, the unknown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there's, there's, uh, it's probably not too much of a correlation, but there's a, um, a setting that you can change in the INI files that's always been very notorious. That's the U grids to load setting, and uh, it does if you set it to a higher number. Which this, I think the the. Uh, uh, the default number is five. Um, but if you set it to higher, it, the, the game will load um, grids farther ahead than than you normally get. So you'll get less pop in. You'll get a lot of stuff that looks better in the, in the distance. But the sort of hidden danger to that is that the game is also doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes that people don't realize about, yeah. you know, spawning NPCs and starting quests and all that stuff. And you, if you set your Ugris too, too high, then you end up with serious conflicts and lots of bad crashes and basically corrupts your save. Mm. I don't, I don't think blink either. It has a guard against that or it, it just simply can't go that far out. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it it it's definitely fun. And having it on the voice uh, um, execution is is so nice because one, it you you still have you know spells in both hands. You uh, don't have yeah, to switch yeah. spells because um, it used to be that you would cast blink, um, oh, and yeah. so you'd have to have <laughs> that in in one hand. Yeah. Um, but uh, so now you can shout it. Now you can shout it. And nice. so <laughs> I did discover, so I've got a, um, a JK city mod that, uh, adds a, um, a room that you can buy, uh, at this, in the winking skeever. Oh, okay. Um, and it's, <clears throat> it's up, uh, up above and it's got a little balcony and, uh, I guess they didn't think anybody would ever be able to get up there because the doors are locked. <laughs> oh, nice! <laughs> uh, that's great. So if I w- if I just uh, blinked up to the rooftop of uh, of uh, the alchemy shop, then I could pop over onto that balcony 
and uh, go inside and there's a, an enchanting table and an alchemy bench and a bed. Nice. And I love JK of- stuff. I have, uh, since I've upgraded my graphics cards and memory and stuff like that, I've just been loading those things like candy. Yeah. They're, they're, they're so, they're so much fun. The, yeah. the outskirts, have you done any of the outskirts mm-hmm. mods? Uh, they have, um, I've, I've run a, bunch of different ones right now i'm yeah. running pretty light on the uh the the rebuilding mod you know um, uh-huh. i think oh, i've got yeah. maybe five yeah. or six of his uh of his city mods going and that's about it yeah um yeah but, yeah so rebuilding mods you're talking about the the uh you know like uh, ones that uh add you know, v- you know, villages outside of the city. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, oh, I thought you yeah. meant a different one. Yeah, there's there's another series of mods that 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 rebuilds after the Civil War and stuff oh, like that. Those, yeah. those are actually work really well. They they work well behind the scenes and 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 they're pretty compatible. Yeah, I have I have the uh, White Run outskirts, uh, Markarth outskirts, um, and Windhelm outskirts run. He's also got one for solitude and a couple of others. They're all, they're all a lot of fun. They're yeah. just really, really cool. Um, yeah, so that was Andy. And then I took this character. I, I tried a mod that, you know, that was supposed to expand the destruction of the uh, dark brotherhood. Hmm. Um, and the, the same mod author had previously made one, that lets you start the uh, the Dark Brotherhood quests without killing Grillad. Mm. Um, you can you can you know bribe a guard to put her in jail after you've seen how awfully she treats the children. <laughs> um, oh, nice! And so you can start the Dark Brotherhood that way. Um, and then you know this other mod uh, was it expands the you know, the defeating of the Dark Brotherhood. Uh, but it it really wasn't all that. So you, you, you've you got to find uh, the password to get in the door. Well, there's a mm-hmm. guy waiting outside the door that tells uh. you what the password is. So, <laughs> you know, boy, that was a stretch. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then not all of the, uh, of the assassins are in the um, sanctuary. Well, so there's only two that aren't, uh, and um, you know they're both very easy to kill where they're at. Oh, um, great! And yeah. so that that so I was a little bummed. Yeah, you don't really have to hunt them down or anything. Yeah. It's not as yeah. I, I think I tried that one, and I like the uh, uh, at your own pace series mm. a little bit better. That it just it extends things without trying to change the the vanilla structure too much because that that can cause all kinds of issues as you know um but yeah the at, at your own pace just removes a lot of the the automatic triggers you have to ask the right questions um yeah, yeah so those are good yeah and then uh then i did forgotten city wow uh, yeah busy. yeah and so this character is not a talker. <laughs> so for one, she's, you know, so her whole, you know, thing is to never be seen. Um, so like when I was, uh, when I was going to uh, tell uh, event or the Aretino kid that, uh, you know, Grawad was in jail I had to sneak into the city uh, without being seen by any guards, and I managed to not even uh, trigger uh, Windhelm as a location. Oh, whoops! Um, which was fine. I didn't. My I never wanted to go there. <laughs> um, but you know, so this character is just all about never being seen. So you know, and. She's never really needed to buy much, and so she has no money. Um, and because she has no money, she has got very low speech. And so going around talking to all these people, trying to, you know, interact <laughs> was was a little bit awkward with this character. So, 
Um, fortunately, we were able to, uh, we, <laughs> I had some, uh, water breathing potions that uh, made life much easier. And, <laughs> yes. and we got through that one uh, <laughs> yeah. pretty smoothly. But yeah, you, I also handy. really wanted to kill a lot of people there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Have yeah. you ever played the game itself, the standalone Forgotten no, City? Uh, yeah. It's pretty good. I really enjoy I I bought it when it came out because I wanted to support them. Uh, it was pretty good. It's on Game Pass now. I, I think it might still be on Game Pass. Uh, regardless, I own it anyway. But uh, yeah, I, it, it's similar to the mod, but it's uh, obviously not attached to Skyrim anyway. Uh, yeah. Standalone game. It's uh, it's uh, uh, was it Roman or Greek? I don't remember because it's been a while since I played it. But so, something like that, a feel like that, as opposed to being in Skyrim itself. But uh, yeah, I, I did like Forgotten City when I when I played through it. I played through it multiple times and did want to kill many people <laughs> each time. So, what kind of character did you take through it, Michael? Oh god, it's been so long. I I could not even remember because it, it was like when it first came out. So, well, no, I mean through uh, the abyss. Oh, through the abyss. Let's see. I'm trying to think. Uh, oh, it was an orc. Uh, an orc archer. Okay. With with uh, so, but also carried swords. I think I was I using more swords on that one. I think I was using more swords than the archery. I think the archery was just secondary. That one. Um. But I uh, made sure I added, uh, obviously, to become a thorough and the uh, whirlwind sprint and all that. Um, but yeah, I didn't have a lot of health. I think I had more stamina than anything. Is what mm. I was, what the way I was going with it. So, like you were saying, the battles, like you know, the fights, you had to be like, yeah, pretty, very strategic. Yeah, pretty strategic on how you went because the enemies were all, you know, the, the saints and seducers all whack you pretty quickly uh let alone some of the other things that were some of the other uh, yeah. enemies that were yeah that whole level of out or vorks yeah <laughs> yeah 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 so you, you can go down pretty uh quickly like the automatons actually surprisingly were not that difficult i found no because it took a when you're sneaking they didn't really see you until mm. you got pretty close i felt like uh except for the one centurion i think towards the end yeah, that one was a little more difficult to kind of work around and get to, but also they wouldn't attack you from ship to ship, which is nice. Right. Yeah, and that's so, <laughs> I took advantage of that and and all of the uh, area of effect with uh, elemental blast. Oh um, yeah, 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 for sure. Because I could just I could blow, they'd hide behind the bridge, you mm -hmm. know, when it was still up. Yep. And but if I blasted the bridge itself. The they would, would catch on through. fire. Yeah. Oh, in the fire. Oh, gotcha. And yeah. uh, and end up, uh, you know, then once I got one of them on fire, then he would burn up the other ones and it would just, you know, continue to <laughs> conflagrate. <laughs> oh, God. Ouch. I think the only thing I had trouble getting from a distance was the Centurion at the end. Like, um, you couldn't shoot it from one ship to the other. No, yeah, they definitely hit him, and yeah, you know, he didn't really come out until you were right there. Yeah, you had to be on the deck before it came out, um, and that was the door where I fell as soon as I walked through it too. Ah, yeah, because it's just, it is a small platform. Yeah, I think I somehow something was happening where I was immediately just falling each time. <laughs> so that was the one where I. I had to make sure I hit the shout right after I turned the doorknob, essentially. Yeah. So before I got through, but after I touched something so that I didn't lose it, so that I, I would be safe. <laughs> yeah, I think it was an orc, and it was, uh, it was the one I had built before this one. I forget exactly what it... I kind of just built it for that. Uh, because basically, I went back to my first save on that and then just redid the character again uh siren route that i went through except this time i went as an orc vigilant <laughs> hmm. i was like i've never really done a vigilant of stendar so i did the living of living other life uh start as a vigilant 
Mm-hmm. Because I was going to go through the uh, Dawn Guard, and there was uh, there's a Vampire Quest mod that I was going to go through as well. I forget the name of, but I'll I'll talk about it next time because I didn't start that yet. Um, but I decided to start Siren Root first, um, so I went down because I had to go to Riften anyway to go to Dawn Guard, obviously. Um, but I so this character like I think like yours has about six hundred magicka, mm-hmm. but only like two hundred at most health, probably a little less than that, because uh, I was getting wiped out pretty f- fast in my first couple uh, encounters mm-hmm. <laughs> in this uh, dungeon. But uh, and I'm using uh, it. Basically, she's a illusion and restoration mage only and just carries daggers as like last resort kind of stay safe um so i'm using vampire's bane and invisibility and the ritual stone so i don't really have any conjuration or anything that i don't really have any of the even destruction or anything just restoration and illusion that's it really um so i've been i was using those so so uh, Siren Root is uh, you meet it's uh, connected to the uh, Blackbriars, but it's like a, a new character added in Elgrim's Elixir. Uh, that's what it's called, Elgrim's, right? Yeah, in Riften, downstairs by the uh, lower level, and uh, she sends you to the side of the lake there, and there's like four people waiting, uh, and then you end up in a in a pretty big dungeon it's like alien ruins and uh there's four other characters that you try and keep alive <laughs> <laughs> uh but like with forgotten city there's multiple outcomes depending on who you keep alive how you talk to them the speech checks what <laughs> puzzles you get through what puzzles you don't get through um so there's a lot of you know, the typical Elliot buttons on the wall type puzzles and uh, Varla stones and stuff like that. Um, there's a lot, there's some that are timed as well. So you have to do it in a specific sequence in a quick amount of time. Mm. Um, you'll switch character views as well and like control a different character. Hmm. So like there was one section I had to go through and hit a couple <clears throat> buttons in a certain amount of time and get through to another room. And then you go talk to another character and that character then has to do like the mirror image of what you did. So you then have to run them kind of through it, um, which was more difficult than I (laughs) thought it would be (laughs) and completely threw me off because it was like essentially the opposite of everything I was doing and it completely, and you have like one chance at it and that's it. Mm. And then that sets that, you know, whatever storyline for that character in motion in that way. Um, yeah, but there's like a lot of puzzles. It's probably about a good four hours. Um, I, I think I may play through it again since there's multiple outcomes because now I have just an idea of the, the layout and stuff. Uh, it would kind of give me a, a better, uh, concept of what's going on and, and how I can do things. You know, they use the water levels and things like that where you can go higher and lower. It's definitely one where water breathing is super helpful. Mm. So, uh, I acquired a necklace of water breathing oh, and that's that, nice. that was very necessary. <laughs> like if you want to, depending on how you want to play through it, you know, if you want to be able to play through it and enjoy the puzzles and do the thing, like, you know, it depends on how you're playing your character. I built it specifically cause I was going to do the vampire stuff. So I didn't really think of the water breathing until I played this. And so then I was like, Oh, I gotta go get the water breathing necklace otherwise i'm just this is going to take me 10 hours instead of four hours and i kind of want to enjoy it and not torture myself with drowning every five right. seconds <laughs> so uh yeah but it's it's fun it's i would say it's uh kind of maybe like a mix of into the abyss and forgotten cities in the sense that um you have different levels and different rooms and different areas and things you got to figure out and like kind of uh, a mystery going on. Um, 
so you got that part of it, but then you also have the multiple outcomes of what can happen at the end as well and how you interact with people and things like that and who lives, who dies, who you get through the, the, uh, quest and all that. Um, and then you have choices. Do you go talk to this person or do you go loot with this person? And, you know, and it doesn't like super hold your hand either. Cause like the guy who you got to loot with just kind of disappears and you got to like the first time I didn't look and I was like, Oh God, what room did he go? Into? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, was like, I was like, ah, I don't know where he is. So I had to kind of reload the save because, so I could watch where he went. Cause there's no like quest marker or anything. It's just go with this person or find this person. And I'm like, well, wait, where did he go though? There's like four doors. I don't know which one. And as soon as I went in one, they were like, nope, you failed that. You didn't follow him. And I'm like, ah, I don't know what door he went in. <laughs> so, yeah, it's one where you have to pay attention to the dialogue, pay attention to what's going on also. Uh, most of the enemies were pretty easy, I would say. It was a lot of skeletons. And I, I, have a, I built like a level 30 character, not like crazy high or anything, but obviously very strong with restoration and illusion um and with undead specifically because since that was the point of the character i was building um so the the skeletons weren't all that difficult but there were ghosts that were not affected by uh what's that spell again the dawn guard spell uh vampire's bane the ghosts were not affected at all <laughs> so that kind of created a problem for me because I had no destruction magic hmm. and only had uh, a couple like glass daggers. <laughs> hmm. So, so I started sneaking and, uh, when the ghosts would come up, I would have to hit the invisibility pretty quickly and sneak. Um, I don't think they were affected by harmony either, if I'm not mistaken, but all, everything else was, um, so that was good. Um, and, yeah, the end was pretty neat. The the end battle was a little creepy. Kind of had a uh, uh, what's the what's the wolf uh, wolf cave? What's that one? Do you get up in solitude? Um, wolf Wolf Skull Cave is, is that? Where yeah, Wolf P Skull Potema is. Yeah, Potema. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it kind of has that kind of vibe at the end like just the look of it a little bit you're not it's not the big open cave like that but just the final enemy is uh kind of has that kind of magic going on protecting it mm. in, within a shell that you have to kind of shut down basically um so yeah it was uh it was, wasn't too long and i i think it's one that you can definitely enjoy on multiple playthroughs at least two, maybe three, where you can figure out different things and uh, find different places to go and different um, different parts of the puzzle that you may miss or you know things like that. So uh, I would definitely like to play through it again just to kind of get a better better handle on everything. Kind of like Into the Abyss, I'd also like to play again because I think the second time through, I would just have a better understanding of how to attack it and keep track of everything better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think the, the big thing is keeping track. I think is it, this, so this has multiple rooms that you got to keep track of. Same thing with that, where you got to keep track of the different levels you go into. Um, like what parts of the puzzle did I already do? What did I not do? Uh, you know, so yeah, tracking it is, it, I think would be easier the second time around, just having a basic understanding of what was happening. So that was, that was kind of, all I got to play in it, but it was uh, really enjoyable. I, I really liked it. I think on Xbox it might be a paid mod, but on Nexus it's free. So if you're playing on PC, um, it is free. And it's Siren Root, not Center Root, in case anybody's <laughs> wondering. Uh, and it's all one word. And uh, it was very enjoyable. So yeah, next up I'm just going to continue through the vampire stuff. I forget what the other mod was that was kind of uh an extension of the vampire not like a direct extension of dawn guard but another vampire quest line like add uh like dlc sized mod um but i, I can't remember the name off it offhand i'll have to i'll have to look it up but um that was why i built the character and i just happened to stumble across this one and i was like oh you know what this seems like you know 
like a pretty quick to go through and and kind of check it out. So that's why I, I hopped onto this one first. But I'm looking forward to being a vigilant and just doing that because uh, <laughs> I've never really done that before. <laughs> yes, laying waste to all those Daedra worshippers. Yeah, just taking out the the undead and and, and people with soul gems in their pocket. Yeah. Yes. They're the worst. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I have no uh like enchanted weapons or anything either. I just have the restoration and uh and the illusion basically. And some janky daggers that I'm wielding. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of fun. So, you know, I never played like just with the heavy restoration like that, I don't think. Um, because always, every time, by the time I've gotten to Dawn Guard, I've always had like everything else kind of build up. So, like, being able to go in and just create a character specifically like this to play it this way is, uh, is pretty fun to like limit yourself on those other aspects and only have have this to lean on and figure ways around it, you know, we'll see what happens when I get to the farm or how that's going to work out. But hmm. you know, <laughs> that's a whole different story. <laughs> yeah. That was all I had in Skyrim. So, uh, did you, did you say you had anything or you were starting something, Victor? Or? Oh, I've done, I've, I've been sort of my usual dabbling. I, dabbling. I finished, <laughs> I, fi I finished off my, well, I didn't really finish off. I just put him to sort of in stasis that my Imperial that, went through the i mean i, I did the uh, the main quest in and, and dragonborn uh and literally in all my embarrassingly high number of hours of playing skyrim i think i've only done the finished the main quest like three times and so <laughs> oh really <laughs> it was it was fun to do and do the and then do the uh, dragonborn subsequent to that so i, I finished those off and it was it was pretty good we, it's mostly a um that one was a sort of a vanilla plus character i didn't do any um you know perk mods or e9 mods or simon magus mods and nothing no enhancements to any of the basic gameplay so that was fun to do and then i've recently i created a a skull uh i'm still kind of working out his <laughs> his his story, but essentially hmm. his name is Farig Stornson. He's he's Storn the shaman's illegitimate son, <laughs> who, <laughs> who, who, uh, who grew up in Raven Rock because he's been kind of shunned by the by the Skull community. And, and oh my gosh! Uh, and anyway, so he 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 uh, he starts out uh, with the alternate start shipwreck mod on the coast of, of Skyrim, and, and things go from there. But um, I'm still working on that, uh, on how that's all going to all going to come out. I think he's going to end up being sort of a maybe a companion, and and uh, uh, but I'm not 100 percent sure. The inspiration was I started going back through some of the uh, Skypothesis uh, videos, and and their first oh, yeah. video is the Skull Hunter who has who does frost magic and and stealth archer mm. and it's it's a great build um and so i thought oh, that, that might be fun and so i just i wanted to try something like that so this this guy is uh uh does conjuration and of course i can't if i'm going to use apocalypse the avenging wraith is going to be in there i am <laughs> going to use it because it's one of my favorite spells ever it uh, is a great spell it yeah. really is so uh but also i've been trying to concentrate on on using the frost astronaut which can be very frustrating because <laughs> it's this big hulking beast thing He's that gets so in the okay. way all the time yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so uh but i also um and i meant to get to it sooner but i got sort of involved in in trying to figure out my storyline and going through various things and back and forth between soul's time and Skyrim. And, and I d didn't quite get to it until last night to, to try it for the first time. There's a big sort of other world mod called Chanterelle that I really knew very little about until I started sort of doing some, you know, going through uh, recent mods. It's not that recent, but I just sort of happened upon it. Uh, and it's really just a kind of an, it's not quite empty, but it's a big, open, slightly empty world where you can go to just hunt. 
uh, and be a, a, a hunter gatherer. Uh, it's almost a perfect place if you want to load up, say hunter born and uh, just hunt animals, gather their skins and bones, make your own armor, uh, live in this place. There are a few small towns and some tribes that, that, uh, that inhabit. And there have been, I think the mod author meant it to be uh, an easel on which to work. So there, there are a few uh, alternate start uh, mods that, that uh, have, modules for chanterelle and chanterelle comes with its own um the chanterelle travel service which is this little hut just outside the heligan cave and you can, <laughs> you can choose a few uh, uh alternate starts right there and then there's a few hidden entrances near falkreath um when you do the alternate starts with the travel service you lose all your all your stuff gets sort of a la uh, the uh, uh, Thalmor embassy thing in, in the main quest. You all the stuff that you have in your inventory goes into a into a special chest, and you go to Chanterelle with basically nothing. Um, and uh, when you leave, you get it all back. You know? uh, the other uh, entrances you actually go in with whatever you have. There is no map uh, in Chanterelle. You you can. Uh, there, I think there's a little compass that mod that they suggest you use, um, but I'm pretty sure there's no, there is no even an add-on mod map available for for that. So you are basically on your own. You've got to find your way around. And I spent some time in there, and because I'm still using this poison poisoning extended mod, which makes spiders and Chorus and Falmer poison extremely dangerous and basically uncurable. You have to have enough potions, high enough restoration, enough magicka to keep yourself cured for about 30 seconds or you will basically die. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, and I've kind of gotten used to that, but there's a lot of spiders crawling mm -hmm. around in Chanterelle. So, <laughs> so they Got kind of tedious after a while yesterday, uh, but anyway, it's, it, it's I'm looking forward to spending some more time in there and, and just exploring it, all of it. Um, and I did want to kind of mention a couple of, as always, I try to pick out a couple of mods. Um, there's a couple of really cool little uh, quality of life mods that I discovered recently. One's called Sanctified Stolen Goods. It's a very cool little premise. Uh, if you have something that you stole that you want to keep, but you fear that you might get arrested and have it taken away, uh, you can go to one of the fences and have them remove the stolen tag from it for a price, of course. Uh, so I thought that was kind of cool. So uh, that's that's sort of my little little mod suggestion. There's also oh, cool. a, uh, take a nap, uh, sleep on chairs, but I haven't been able to get it to work. Uh, I have it loaded, <laughs> but I, I can't make it work um, for for whatever reason. It's just it just not it's, it won't trigger. I can sit forever and I still won't sleep. Possibly because I'm using um, Last Seed, uh, which is a, one of the survival mods. Um, I switched over from uh, what was I using before? Sunhelm, I think, is, the, is what it was called. Um, Last seed is pretty good, um, and I switched from EFF to Nether's follower mods. Uh, I know you guys don't use followers much, um, but I wanted something that that uh, was a little more reliable. And Nether's is actually updated fairly regularly still. Mm. So. Um, um, so anyway, that's 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 all I have to report. I'll definitely have to check out that Chantrell because. Yeah. So I just uh, yesterday started a, a new character, and it it was kind of roughly based on a um, a pure race uh, challenge run. Mm. So he was a uh, but I've got Hunterborn. And, you know, and camping and, and I needs going. 
Um, oh yeah, I need that's that's the one. I would definitely recommend you try before you know. Give it a try. Try last seed. It's actually pretty good. Um, yeah, I wrote that one down. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so so I had him uh, alt start into uh, camping in the woods. Mm, yeah, and then I took everything except for the five apples and three <laughs> healing potions yeah. and put them in the bag. Yeah. And so, um, you know, the first deer I killed, I punched to death. <laughs> Same thing with the first wolf. Yeah. Um, cause I needed to get some hide, um, to make, uh, and some sticks to make a bow out of. Yeah. And so I had to, so then I was running around naked for the longest time, uh, because it takes forever to, uh, you know, to get high enough level in Hunterborn to actually be able to, you know, make for plates. Yeah, it does. Uh, I, I usually pair up Hunterborn with, uh, complete crafting overhaul, not mm-hmm. the Keiko, not the you know, but the, her earlier version, which was the C- CCOR, um, because that gives you a few um, buffs. For instance, you can you can add experience to the tanning rack, and add experience to the smelter, and add experience yeah. to, the, um, and that that helps a little bit to move you along. I also with Hunterborn, I always shut off the 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 time, uh, you know. It just, I yeah, just shut it all off. It's just so <laughs> much. Oh my God. It's, it's yeah. It, yeah. It, it definitely, you know, cause as, especially if you've got a hunger, you know, and, and thirst meter. Thing oh, that going, too. Oh my God. Yeah. You know, yeah. You, you, know you, uh, you feel dress the animal. You need to eat and drink. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And then sleep. And then, go, yeah, yeah, no, and then you just... skin it and you've got to eat and drink. Yeah. Yeah, it's ridiculously um, it's it's overdone. I think, and you can adjust that in the in the MCM. I think you can yeah, change the, the yeah, amount of time it takes. Uh, but I just shut it all off, and I just have no patience for that. But uh, and I, I realize it's like it's unrealistic. But then so are shouts and frost atronox. So <laughs> that's fair. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but it's been pretty fun. So now yeah. I've you know, um, so I'm still using stone arrows because I don't have any. They're pretty uh, good, actually, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. No, they they were fine. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I finally used uh scrimshaw and, uh, mm-hmm. made myself some bone armor. Yep. Bone armor is great. Have you, did you, uh, load up scrimshaw extender? Cause there's even more stuff. Uh, no, I just have the basic. Yeah. That, that's that's nice i like i love the little cash markers because you can get a fast travel marker there yeah i haven't and figured stuff. out how to use those yet yeah you gotta drop them basically that's, uh, that's it, yeah. i tried that but nothing happened oh oops oh well <laughs> um, so i didn't drop it right evidently oh uh, something yeah i forget um, um but it, it's been fun it's uh you know it's one of those things where i can do it for a while um yep but not a really, really long time. Well, that's what what I found when I when I've done a few runs like that is that you get up to a point where you get, you know, you you you've developed yourself. You can make really good, decent armor that's as good as what you might start with or or have at a certain level in a you know a different type of playthrough. And once you get there, you kind of say, "Well, okay, I'm either done with this, or I'm just going to go ahead and do what I would have done on a on a regular playthrough." And you just you know, move on from there. It's, that's, that's yeah. basically what, what, um, but that's what I was hoping. And maybe you'll find that you know, if you get some, some more time with Chanterelle than I have, that you'll, you'll find that there's more to do in there. There's definitely, and I haven't found them yet, but there, there are, there's also a couple of, if you search around for Chant, in Chanterelle, the, the main mod, and then you'll find some other, uh, mod authors have created, um, not only alternate starts for it, but a few little quests within it. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's villages there. There's, there's, there's some small population, but it's, it, from what I can tell, it's, it's sort of like a primitive lands uh, version of Skyrim. Yeah. And, and uh, depending on what flora mods you have running, it's either compatible or not. Uh, I'm, since a year or two now, I've been using uh, Traverse the Elven Wald, and I, which is beautiful 
in Skyrim, but it doesn't really translate into Chanterelle very well. Chanterelle mm -hmm. says it's compatible with simply bigger trees and a couple of other fairly familiar and well-known mods like that. So you can throw yeah. those on. Anyway, it's it's a uh, it has some you know definite possibilities. I'm, I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Uh, by the way, just for anybody who's interested or who isn't following things, uh, there's a fairly significant update to Valheim. Um, including, oh, was there? Yeah, including a new NPC called the Bog Witch, um, and a whole bunch of new quality life uh, cooking related things and stuff like that. So it's looking look pretty cool but i haven't been back in in valheim for literally months so um yeah i was just looking through the chanterelle images actually on the next looks kind of cool doesn't it yeah, yeah really cool looking yeah. yeah um and kate's been playing this new game oh, and damn it i i was i meant to write it down and i forgot Ugh. um well if I can manage to pull it up before we end here. Uh, yeah. I did the demo of uh, Nate Perkypile's uh, uh, The Axis Unseen. So hmm. he was one of the uh, um, main art designers, I think, uh, at uh, Bethesda. Oh, oh and, yeah. Uh, left a few years ago and mm -hmm. started his own. He's So he's got his demo out and his uh, – it should be, shoot, any time now. It was supposed to be late October that it was released. So I, I saw a, a a video, you know, a YouTube thumbnail related to that. And I did, I never followed up on it. That sounds really cool. Uh, yeah, as you would expect from an art director, it's a very visually, you know, stunning game. I'll bet. Yeah. Um. So it was, and it's got a good. Uh, uh, photo mode. Oh, nice. Um, I posted a few pictures in our, uh, in our discord. It's in the, uh, I think it's all game central or something like that. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Did you get into scat? Was it scattered space? Is that what it is? For uh, yep. Went through shattered space, shattered space. That's it. Yeah. Um, been playing a lot of fallout London. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. They they just had an update, uh, I guess just last week, and uh, big improvements, much more stable. Oh, nice! Um, you know, tidied up a lot of stuff that uh, you know that had been coming up uh, uh, as issues with you know all kinds of things, you know, spelling errors and Random quests stuff that wouldn't like that. start. Yeah. And, but yeah, it's it's doing great. Nice. And uh, any new No Man's Sky? Uh, so last week, uh, Sean posted an emoji, which means that an update is <laughs> uh, Something's <eminent>. coming. <laughs> and, and of course, you know, everybody's having fun with it because it was the uh, cursing emoji. Oh, <laughs> God. Yeah. So, you know, of course, you know, oh, they're adding swearing to the game. Of course. But, um. Which would be kind of funny because you can't name, uh, so you can name planets and animals and all that kind of stuff uh, in the game, but you can't name them anything bad. Um, it'll it'll just, um, you know, change it to, you know, like blank characters. Um, so it would be rather ironic if they would allow cursing in the game. Hmm. Ah, sorry. I found the Kingdom Two Crowns. Oh, uh, okay. The, my kids are very much into this. It gets great reviews. It's a side scroller with a lot of depth, from what I gather. And it's a it's got an online co op mode, so it's great for that kind of stuff. Uh, we did have uh, two new reviews. Uh oh. <laughs> Which I think I sent you guys a while back. Because it was a while ago. Because uh, uh, it was, I think it was after we recorded it last time. So it was September. <laughs> uh, let's see. We have one from Australia. Um, 
You want to expect to have a great deal of choice when it comes to decent podcasts about a game made in 2011. <laughs> this is fair. Uh, thankfully, with Skyrimatic, you don't need plenty of options, as this one's everything you need in a gaming pod. Superb production value and interesting and engaging hosts. Uh, I think there's more to it, but it got cut off on me on what it sent. But uh, thank you. We appreciate it. And the other one was just uh, great work. And that one's from uh, Great Britain. Um, the name is possibly familiar. If that's someone we know, reach out. If you're someone who may have been on the show in the past. Oh, my out. God. Are you mm. serious? Yeah. So reach out. We're still Please here, reach man. out. Yeah, we're still here. <laughs> and we miss you. As far as we're concerned, you're still here. So just hop oh, back yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and if it's not that person, sorry we confused you, and thank you for the review. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, But uh, yeah, no, those were those were nice. We appreciate it. Uh, you know, we've been doing the show a long, long time at this point. Uh, not as long as the game's been out, but hey, <laughs> pretty close. <laughs> pretty darn close. Yeah, pretty darn close. <laughs> pretty darn close. But thankfully, there's tons of mods and. Uh, you know, I still enjoy playing, you know, I don't play as much as I did in the old days, but I enjoy like having a reason to sit down and play in a specific way, especially. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I certainly wish I had more time to play it, but uh, <laughs> that's just life, you know, <laughs> but that's coming, uh, Michael. That's coming. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> true. The countdown is on. The countdown yeah, it is sure on. <laughs> is. Okay. Yep. Yeah, but then you'll just end up like me. And instead of, you know, playing a lot more Skyrim, you'll play a lot more of, you know, 10 different games. Yeah. yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. yeah that, that's what happens. Cause I start playing like three different things when I sit down. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like today, I was like, nope. Today, this is the only thing I'm finishing. Uh, Finish it. What the hell was the mod I played? I forget. Sign but root. Whatever. Sign root. Yeah. yeah. Sign root. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, finishing Siren Root because I got like maybe a half hour left in it. I'm like, I got to finish this so I know what happened at the end. <laughs> so, but I was almost went on to something else and I was like, nope, 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 nope. Go back. Go back. <laughs> finish it up. But uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. And if anybody's uh, got a character to play in, role playing, whatever, and they want to send in feedback, definitely do it. Yeah, uh, please we do. have that all the time and you're very welcome to send it in or send in your reviews or mods of mods or anything. Uh, I'll definitely read them out um, or I could have AI read them at this point, I assume. Um, <laughs> as opposed to in the past when I read everything, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. definitely. Uh, at podcast gmail.com feel free to email in and uh yeah uh that's all i got anybody got anything no yeah I'm done. or or join the discord yes join discord in the or, uh, show notes and or join the discord and or yeah in the show notes hit it up uh it's there thanks for listening everybody talk to you Night next all. time take care